Welcome to the Angler Action Conservation Report this week. We're going to talk about the new regulations that are happening here in July 1st, start, starting July 1st, and we're going to start off with the sheep's head. Uh, just in case you guys weren't aware, it was a 15 uh, bag limit, and now it went to a 10, uh, 10 per person bag limit, and that includes per person per day. What do you guys say about that? Well, I think it was an appropriate change. You know, this was a, the appropriate steps by FWC. They went around, they did their workshops, they had a lot of people come in around the state to talk about it. And uh, for the most part, recreational anglers were in, in agreement with what they were proposing. What's interesting is that the initial proposal was from 15 to 5, right? And so there's two ways that you can kind of reduce harvest. And one is to reduce, reduce the bag limit, how many fish you can keep, right? You can catch them all day, but you can only keep so many. And the other is to reduce the size of the fish you keep. And typically, the most effective way to reduce harvest is by, uh, by changing the size limit. Because that will affect, by fish, the ones that you catch, the biologists and the managers all know that historically, mm -hmm. if you really want to cut numbers, you, you start messing with the size limit. But so the, the proposals came out and they had these workshops. And in the workshops, and this is what gets interesting with regulations in the state and public comment, in the workshops, when you're standing there looking at the person and the people that show up mm -hmm. and they ask questions, what do you think? And people are presenting their, their side of the conversation. And someone says, yeah, you know, five's plenty. Five is plenty. And you got to consider as well that sheephead fishing in Palm Beach County is different than it is in, in Duval County, right? Mm -hmm. The sheephead they get in the wintertime are a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. So five sheephead per person Three of us in a boat, 15 sheep's heads in a cooler up there in the winter. It makes a difference. That's a good size haul. Absolutely. So 15 fish each, 45, you know, that's... that's. And what also changes, now this is interesting, uh, it, it turned into a, uh, a restricted species, which means, which means you can't just go, if you're commercially, you can't just go out and catch them on your SPL. Correct. So now you have to catch them... You, now you have to go out and get your restricted species right, which, to catch the catch Which is the saltwater products license, or SPL, Actually, yeah, can you it's explain called that, please? $50. Right. Restricted species, it's a little different ball game because there's a bunch of fish that fall into the restricted species category, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's, I knew you have to have like snapper grouper separate licenses, mm -hmm. but it's an RS for those species. And you know what I've noticed over the years is that a lot of a lot of <coughs> excuse me you're excused a lot of uh, species Water. including you know for example barracuda they're all they're all starting to fall into these re uh, restricted species mm -hmm. and so I, I think I think it's only a matter of time before they get rid of this SPL I think it's I th I did it hypothetically I don't know but it, it just seems like they're they're taking a lot of these other species mm. and they're pushing them into the restricted species slowly but surely. And eventually they might get do away with the SPL. Well, it's like the SPL originally is what they the commercial fishermen would call a trash fish license. And it was your sand perch, your jack Carvels, croaker, right. you know, all, all the right. fish that really don't go to market, but they do go to market. Now everything go to market. There right. is anything is marketable in this day and age. So I kind of lean your you might have a good one there, buddy, because if they keep doing what they're doing and changing the, the <clears throat> size limits, the bag limits, and the things, the way they're doing it, but I, I don't know. They're always going to have to have something to control or allow people to catch without the RS, which is your trash fish, they're called. But if you remember before, I've done them before. That's it's, there's no That's such discriminating, thing. Danny. There's no such thing as a trash, trash fish. Exactly. Well, in my book, okay. you're offending the fish, Danny. That, but the that RS SPL license, the commercial industry refers to it as an entry level license, and that's Correct. how they recruit younger folks into the business and, and keep it going. So it'd be an interesting conversation, and I don't necessarily disagree with you. But but coming back to the bag limit, what was interesting and when FWC asked for public comment, the average number of fish that were typically kept by sheephead fishermen was five to six, but the bag limit was fifteen. Mm -hmm. So when they said, let's reduce it to five, that was kind of where their logic was coming from. But we can, we can reduce it to five because most people are only keeping five or six. That's mm -hmm. only 
some people keep in more than five and it's only one more. Mm -hmm. But usually what you have is a, is a few people that will keep their limit all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So See it every day. <laughs> what, what, what was interesting that happened was, and I said this is the interesting relationship between regulations, public comment, trying to understand, trying to get the pulse of fishermen and FWC trying to do the best they can mm -hmm. and, and kind of walk in that line. So they, when they had their public comments, everybody said yes, five. Then it got out onto the internet. And then the fishermen that, that don't show up at these things, but they have a whole lot of courage when it comes to the keep, we call them keyboard cowboys, right? Me. They start complaining and saying, well, I gotta go all the way down to five, why not 10? Well, in this particular case, after FWC went back and did the math and said, well, if people are keeping mostly five or six, we're really only talking about a half a percentage point of increase mm -hmm. if we keep it to 10 instead, as opposed to five. Mm -hmm. So it really ends up being more of a political thing and a, you know, functionally it's not that big a deal. Because the people that keep six, they're gonna keep keeping their six. They're not gonna go out and go, Okay, I've got to, got to, we've got to try to get our bag limit. And that's a mindset with me. I look at people and I go, y'all mm -hmm. need to, you know, it's, yeah, why does it have to be the bag limit? Why can't it be dinner and maybe a little for mom and dad or the neighbor other than we got to make our limit. we got to get the limit. I'm like, but if, you, it, if they keep doing this, eventually down the road, what will happen is they will start messing with the numbers a little more and go, well, you know what? We're just going to up the slot size to where... You got it. The fish are going to have to be bigger. You're going to start catching less of a keeper size fish, right? Which is, if you all caught that, what Brett was saying, it really it's it's it makes sense. There's Absolutely. a fine line where you know that the researchers can step in and FWC can step in if they want and say, well, if y'all don't want to play that way, we'll just make y'all play this way. So it sounds fair. Ten fish. But what was yeah. really interesting was was that you're still allowed to spear them. You're still allowed to cast net them. You're still uh, almost. You can do almost anything to catch these fish. But that that's something that that could, they could change as well, and that didn't seem to be a factor uh, as far as uh, targeting these. Fish. And that's got. Right. There's a lot of people that feel differently in certain areas about that. I know a guy in Boynton Beach that every winter, him and his buddy, there's three of them, and they get in a little skiff and they go out and they flat put a hurting on the sheephead right here in the Lake Worth Lagoon, spearing. And it's legal. They're allowed legal. to do they're it. Allowed to do yeah. it. But now there's their limits are they're backing the limit off. They're not allowed to keep as many fish. If I'm correct, this is commercial correct. and recreation. Right. right. So yeah, well that's... now now there is one species that you're not allowed to spear, and that's another one that they changed the regulations on, and that is the triple tail. The triple tail it uh, it increased from 15 inches to 18 inches now, mm -hmm. which is a big which is a big jump. Three inches doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a big jump. Mm -hmm. That's a big jump on triple tail. Mm -hmm. um, so now you can't keep anything, starting July 1st, of course, you can't keep anything under 18 inches uh, before it was 15 inches. And now another interesting thing is it extended into federal waters. Mm -hmm. So that means that before it was only state waters, which means three miles offshore, that's where the regulations were, were uh, enforced. Mm -hmm. Now being in federal waters means that you cannot... You still got to go by the regulations now with 18 inches, and you also have to go by the bag limit, which is two per person per day. Your right. thoughts? Ten per person. Right, well, this is the other side of it. So this one, they decided to keep the bag limit the same, but they increased the size. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of reasons for that. One, well, number one, like I said, statistically, the easiest and fastest way to reduce harvest is to increase the size limit on a fish. That comes from the great Ron Taylor mm -hmm. directly. Uh, retired the master. FWC biologist. Mm -hmm. But what's what's interesting here is so before you could you could spear fish or you could do whatever you wanted with a triple with a triple tail in federal waters. And this really comes into play more than the sheep said. Sheep said regulations went out to federal waters as well. But, but you're not going to get in federal waters, really. Right, mm -hmm. right. But that's a, it's a different case with triple tail. Now the other side of that size limit is there's a situation there where the biologist said yes, that's more in line with the size that they get to where they become more uh, reproductively viable. Mm -hmm. So a 15 inch fish not really reached sexual maturity. At 18 inches they got a better chance of making sure that they've had a they've been able to stronger stock, fish. stronger gene pool, more you know, I mean they get they get that little bit of difference in length allows them to get a little better at, you know, the reproduction side of it. What I like is how they went state law, federal law, match them up. There is no right. questioning it when you when that guy blows in offshore and goes, well, 
Well, I was four miles out. You know, before that was that game that they play with FWC. You can't play that game no more. Not with, not with the, the triple, triple tail. tail. So right. When anytime you can simplify a law, it makes it better for everybody because if, number one, it makes it easier for us anglers to know what we're doing, and number two, you never want to be in any situation with law enforcement when you're on the receiving end of a lecture and the result of the lecture is, ends up being at the discretion of the officer. Right? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to. Then it ends up being a piece of paper <laughs> that you sign and it gets handed to you, and you got to go to the courtroom about it. Log your fish on I Angler. Correct. That's right. Yes. Every fish you 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 catch. Whether you keep it or let it go, the value of that fish increases when you log it in iAngler. iAngler.org, log it, your fish. And, and it's very important, guys, because this is going to give us, uh, you know, for future, actually helping us make regulations the right way instead of just assuming on, on certain things. So, But the more people who actually log their fish in, these scientists have more research to go by to let us know whether we should... Uh, it helps them make the proper decisions when it comes to making decisions. Log your fish it, on your iAngler app, guys. Do it. It's, it's, it's for the future. Trust me on it's this for one. The future it's it's of your the voice in the fishery is iAngler, and it's only going to grow in the future. Yes, keep that in mind. You know, what, the, the, the biggest thing about this is what this will do and what it has been doing already is making what the scientists see in the fishery match what us fishermen see. Mm -hmm. And as long as we're seeing the same thing and they say, hey, this fishery's taking a beating, we gotta, we got to tighten up the regulations, as long as that's what we're seeing, we're always cool with it. It's where we run into discrepancies and their information is wrong and they make regulations that don't match what all of us are seeing, mm -hmm. that's when we start to have problems. And those mm -hmm. kind of problems lead to mistrust and anger and it just gets out of hand. Yes. So this now brings for, it all together and, and makes it all work. For a last question, iAngler, angleraction.org or dot, it's dot angleraction.org? Both of those go to the same spot. iAngler is the app. Angler Action is the program. Check out one. Angler Action on your computer at home, guys. And we'd like to thank uh, Brett Fitzgerald and Captain Danny Barrow for being part of this uh, Angler Action Conservation Report. Thank we'll you. see you next time. You're welcome.